Hey everybody, Martin Chuck here and welcome to Modern Golf with Martin Chuck. And you know what, you know what I need? I need another little sip of coffee here. Let me move my chair out of the way. We got a little coffee, a little Colombian grind. We call it gravy delicious here, right here. Yeah, mm, put that down here. Might have to come back to that a little bit later. So this episode is all about going to a golf school. You know, I'm going to talk about golf schools. I'm going to talk about if it's right for you. We're going to talk about, you know, the stages of your game. Are you a complete newbie or are you the state champion? You know, and does that make sense for you? So there's a ton of golf schools around the world. There's a ton of golf schools in the United States. Obviously, seasonally in my former country of residency, Canada. And I want to talk about all those elements. You know, should I go to a golf school? How do I know if I'm ready? How do I pick a golf school? What major things should I look at when deciding, you know, make the most out of the trip, destination golf schools, that sort of thing. So let's talk about golf schools in general. You know, why do people go to golf schools? I was a club pro for 16 years after my brief stint as a tour player chasing the golf ball around uh, North America for the most part. And I would be, you know, and I taught a lot. I, had a, I was at three very nice clubs. I've was, I was been teaching for 36 years now or thereabouts, crazy, well, great majority of my life. And members would come in my office with a cup of coffee and sit down whether I asked them to or not. They'd sit there and they'd say, you know, Martin, I'm considering going to a golf school. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? I, you know, I'm your teacher. I'm your pro. I, I'm gonna, I want to help you. And, and, and I, at the time, I got my back up a little bit because I'd say, why do you want to go to a golf school? Because, you know, I'm your coach, and I know you guys and gals out there have local courses. Perhaps you're a member of a course. Maybe you have a great teaching staff even at that golf course. The thing is, I get it, okay? I, I get it. I got it when I was a club pro. I, well, later when I didn't feel so, you know, it was like an attack on me because as a teacher. But I started to understand it. People need an immersive environment to make a change, you know, I'll give you an example. Piano lessons in the old Chuck household. You know how many weeks my lovely piano teacher, yes, I take piano lessons with my kids. Now COVID's kind of messed that up, but, you know, we'll get back to it. And this gal comes over to the house and we take our piano lessons. And you know what happens? Sometimes during the week, I don't get to practice. I have good intentions. I want to practice. So this lady comes over to the house and I'm working on my same little bit that I've worked on for a ton. If I don't get the reps in, I don't get any better. And so she basically is paid to watch me practice. Now, I know a lot of you out there because I was your teaching pro. You know, you'd set up a series of lessons. Maybe it's six lessons. You start a lesson. Life gets in the way. You come back and you're, you've worked all week. You were with the kids. You maybe had stuff to do. You couldn't get to the range. You come back for your next lesson. It's basically jumping back and doing the same lesson all over again. I totally understand that because life gets in the way. Now, you go to a golf school. Guess what? It's an immersive environment. I've got you there. And not just me, all the golf schools have you there. We've got you. We can work on that thing that's really driving you crazy, whether it's the chicken wing, whether it's the topping the golf ball. Maybe it's just learning how to grip the golf club properly. The immersive environment of a golf school is like, okay, fine, you got me. I'm sequestered. Teach me. I'm putty in your hands. That's what's cool about a golf school environment. You know, so is it right for you? Are you the student that go, can go to a golf school and be in a, a small group environment? And can you be okay with that? I tend to think it's a great thing to do. A lot of people say, you know, Martin, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if I want to be around other people, the great unwashed in a golf school environment. I'd rather be one on one with you. And I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. Because in a golf school, what's fun is I can say, all right, Mr. Mr. Martin Chuck here, we're going to work on. We're going to work on this element of sequence, and we're going to work on how this arm gets kind of in front of you a little bit more and how you hit a shot, and I can give a student a task. And the funny thing about the golf school environment is, and I hope all golf schools do this, I get my group together, I show them, I give them a little tour, and I'm sure every golf school, same thing, hey, obviously here's the range, here's where the bathrooms are, here's where the studio is, you know, this is the... This is the schedule of the day, you know, but I always start with my group. Lovely people, how are you? Martin Chuck, here's my team of awesome coaches. 
Okay, here's your little swag bag of tour striker emblazoned stuff. And then I say to them, guess what, I have a magic wand, and I really do, okay? It's a Harry Potter magic wand I got at the Harry Potter exhibition. Some of you have heard this story, and I go, thwap! You know, why do I thwap them? Why do I zap them? Why did the lightning bolt go through their body? Because I make them a freshman in high school. I make them a freshman in high school because think about this. If you are a freshman in high school and you want to play in the coach's team, you know, you don't show up with a team like, all, oh, I don't know, coach, that didn't feel right. I'm not going to do that. No, you don't do that. Okay, if you did that, coach would be like, hey, hey, door's right over there. Go ahead. Don't let it hit you on the, on the way out. You go into that environment with the attitude like, okay, I've picked this golf school, whatever golf school it is, west coast, east coast, down south, up north, wherever. I am going to trust these coaches for this period of time. Now, there's a little bit of back and forth for sure. You know, how does your body work? Most of my clients are 50 and older. They are, they're like the $6 million man. They got fake hip, fake knee, whatever they have. That's fine. I need to know that, by the way. And you're, all your coaches at golf schools need to know that. But once you're there, keep in mind, the coach is going to ask you to do something. And it's up to you to give it your high school try. Because if you want to make my team, and that's what I do, I say, hey, I want you to make my team. Make my team. You know how you're going to make my team? I'm going to give you thoughtful, caring instruction. I'm going to obviously answer your questions, take away the doubt on maybe what it is you're trying to do. Then I'm going to kind of let you do it for 15 or 20 minutes on your own to self-organize. Because if you think it's great if a coach stands there and watches you do it for that 15 or 20 minutes, uh uh it's really nice actually when you get the instruction there's clarity to it. Maybe a video of that exact drill you're doing is put in your training space. I'll get to that later. And now you have clarity, you have a goal, and you are kind of set free to go work on it, self-organize yourself for a little bit. And then the coach can come back to you and maybe give you a little refinement, a little buff up. Okay. So a golf school, like-minded sufferers in golf, all having a laugh. That's the beauty of it. You have different levels of people. You have people that are like, do I hold this end? Is this the end I hold and whap it with this part down here? Or do I hold this end? And the people that hold this end really don't know how to hold this end. And so as a coach, we go through the basic things that help people develop their skills. We try to compound stacking skills so people can develop and understand the game more deeply and get better. And we have you. We have you in my case in Phoenix. It's a three-day camp. Guess what? We have you for three days. It's fun. We feed you. We, we water you. We make sure you have plenty of hydration. We take you on the golf course. That's fun. That's a pretty inclusive event to kind of get to understand you as the golfer, maybe what you've suffered with, what you're terrified of, because let's face it, if you don't put your hand up, if you're not terrified of something, okay, golfing, you're a liar, okay? That's lion country. That's so far in lion country. I, you know, so everybody's got some kind of an issue that we can either take the, the rough edges away or we can just start to educate, and that's the beauty of a golf school. So, you know, talking about a golf school, let's go through the Martin, what if I'm a, a newbie in golf? Okay, let's spend a couple minutes on I'm a newbie in golf. So the newbie in golf, here's the newbie in golf. They're over the golf ball. Let's go face on down the line. Let's see how that view looks, if that works out. Little face on down the line view. Good. Am I in decent? Oh, good. I'll move back just a sliver here. So I'm in better view. Perfecto. So the face on down the line. The newbie golfer. Okay, so here's your newbie golfer. The newbie golfer settles in. Uncle Al taught them to interlock because apparently that's the magic key to good golf is to mesh those hands deeply together. And boy, oh boy, I'm ready to go. And then what's the big key for the newbie? You're right. Don't lift your head. So here we go. Newbie golfer, good luck. Where to go? Okay, let's do that again. Where to go? Oh, the perfect top shot. I one hopped it in my tour bag over there. So the newbie golfer, they're terrified. They don't want to miss. They don't want to embarrass themselves. You know what? We break through the ice right away. Any good golf school is going to do that. They're going to learn how to be an athlete. They're going to learn how to get their hands on properly. They're going to learn that, you know what? The job of a newbie golfer is to G-A-S-P, grip, alignment, stance, posture, gasp. 
Okay, a newbie golfer has got to learn how to hold the golf club properly. They've got to learn how to get the heel pad of that lead hand on the club properly. They have to learn how to create a lever between the lead arm and the golf shaft. They have to learn how to get their hands on nicely. Maybe not like Uncle Al taught them how to do it. They need to learn how to get their radius, this combination of arms, I call it volleyball bump pass arms, nice and long. They need to learn how to waggle the golf club and organize this radius to a point that it's not resting on the mat, that it's a, a nice radius, a nice long system that combines their arms, their shoulders, and their club unit. And then they need to learn how to turn their, brush the grass, face the target. And you can figure out what rhymes with grass, okay? And they need to learn how to do this basic event. So a newbie that comes to the, a golf school, my golf school, will learn how to do that if the coach is worth his or her salt shortly, right? Now you may miss. And I always say, I don't care if you miss. I know you care if you miss. Here's the task, Mr. 15-year-old, or here's the task, Mrs. 15-year-old. Let's learn how to get our golf good hands on there. And I'll tell you what, if you go to a golf school and your coach doesn't build you a good grip, run. Okay, if you don't hold the instrument properly and your coach doesn't get on you about how you move your, how you get your hands built on a club, you're at the wrong golf school. But we want to get our hands on nicely. We want to feel the weight of that golf club. We want to rhythmically be able to connect that starting form to a finishing form. And if that's in a short little shot, you will have success quickly. So the newbie golfer comes and they get some basic simple physical things just like that. How to take their body. We use a T-square so they have a visual reference on the ground. They know where the target line is, the barber pole. They know where the ball line is. They know how to walk into a golf shot. They know how to set themselves up in a rhythm and a cadence and they learn how to do this. And guess what? Over three days, everybody learns how to do that. Now, what happens now? So this golfer, this newbie golfer, okay, let's see here. Golf ball in place on the range, sometimes studio work, but usually on the range for most golf schools. Some are indoors, most are outside. Maybe some of our blend of indoors and outdoors. Mine's a blend of that. We teach the newbie how to stand on the target line, how to walk into a golf shot. We call this place zero. The step forward is one getting your volleyball arms, getting your arms up on top of your body, not you know, like you're a gun, gunfighter with your elbows at your sides, up on top of your body. How to tip over a golf ball is two, aiming the face. Three, left foot for ball location. Four, right foot drops back. And then we introduce this little move right here known as the waggle. Okay, not enough coaches teach the waggle. We're big waggle teachers at the Tour Striker Golf Academy. And then this little course, cornerstone shot, so the newbie can understand how to rotate, relocate, have structure, collect the golf ball, get crispy shots going toward the target. They don't necessarily do this Hail Mary trying to roast the driver right away because they can't, and nor should they. Be like putting a 16-year-old new licensed driver in some wicked fast car. They're gonna they're gonna smash into a tree out there. Right? You gotta start them off appropriately. So that's kind of the journey of the newbie. The journey of the newbie in a golf school is like, we'll see, we may have a group of 12 at my, at my camp, and we have four coaches, and we'll say, okay, newbie, 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 you three together, coach Jim. Okay, Big Jim, perfect. Big Jim gets the newbies this week. You know what Big Jim does with the newbies? He talks about some rules. He talks about different turf conditions. He talks about, hey, when you get to the golf course, this is kind of what you do when you show up first. When you leave the golf course, you know what? Snap a few singles off that and hand it to the cart kid who cleans up your golf bag. There's certain little etiquette pieces and certain little things that if nobody tells you, you wouldn't know. That's part of getting educated at a golf school. Now, some of you, let's say, okay, there's newbies. There's a lot. We could talk about newbie going to a golf school. Is it a great way for you to learn? 100%. 100%. Because we'll get into it later. Continuity program, videos, follow-up, stuff that re- kind of sparks what you've learned, very important. Every golf school should do this. So say you're my normal client. I'm not going to say normal. Say you're my typical client. My typical client would be um, somebody who's played golf for a while, 
maybe frustrated with their game. Maybe they are, in my case, 50 and older, okay? They were at one time maybe at 13 or 12. Now they're a 18. Maybe they lost some distance. And they've never really flushed a golf ball, but they could play a little bit better when they were a little bit younger. Maybe they had a bit more speed, okay? That's the lady or guy who shows up at my golf school for the most part. Frustrated, you know, handicap golfer that's in the 12 to 22 range, give or take. Typically, what's that golfer all about? They've played some golf in their past with some misaligned impact conditions. They can get it around the golf course. They know the rules. They know what to do when they show up to the golf course. They know what to do when they leave the golf course. They know kind of what to do when they're on a side hill lie. They know what to do when the ball's below their feet. You know, they have some idea what to do when the wind's blowing. What they don't quite have is an effective impact condition. Why? Perhaps they're played a ton of golf, they watched a ton of videos, and they've learned how to swing inside out. They learned how to swing so inside out that they don't actually learn how to rotate themselves powerfully. Maybe they have a power leak, pretty typical. Maybe they've got themselves in this steep thing that they, in younger days, they could jump up and fit in the club a little bit better. So we get both sides of the equation with those decent golfers, okay? Those golfers that have, you know, touched on 80 once in a while, they break 90 quite often, but they've got some flaw. They've got some steep-ish delivery. They've got some too shallow delivery. They need to be kind of bumped back into the line a bit with some good information that they can reflect back on. So a typical one would be maybe some fella, you know, let his lead hand get a little too weak and they have to open a face and all of a sudden to fix that, they back out of the shot a bit and they try to fix the face. They don't even know they're doing it. And maybe they're club pro. And let me give you an example of this too. I was a club pro. My job was to be nice to you. I had to figure out a way to be just ex as excited to see you every time you walk through the golf shop doors, no matter if it was 15 times that day. Hey, Mr. Smith, good to see you. You walk in two minutes later, Mr. Smith, what's up? Later that day, Mr. Smith, five high fives. Okay, well, maybe not that phony, but I had to be that guy, okay? At a golf school, I don't have to be that guy. Am I nice? Yeah, I'm nice. Am I gonna tease you? You know it. Okay, are we gonna have a good time? Absolutely, but I don't have to placate you, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna say, hey, listen, grip sucks, sorry. Let's fix it. This is how we do it. And you're going to go like this, and I'm going to go, nope. And you're going to go like this, and I'm going to go, nope. And you're going to go like this, nope. And then you're going to go, hey, Martin, how's this? And the angels are going to sing, and the clouds are going to part. Wait a minute, I'm in Phoenix. There's no clouds. And then the face is going to be in a better place here at delivery. And you're going to hit it, and you're going to go, <gasps> and I'm going to go, yep, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to be nice to you. I'm going to be nice to you, but I'm going to be real with you. Club pros have to be nice. That's their job. If they're not nice, they get fired. You can't fire me. You can leave. Nobody does. But you can't fire me. I'm your coach. Okay, coaches, guess what? Are coaches nice? They shouldn't be. They should be truthful. They should hold you accountable. That's what I do. Okay. Um, we got some hellos from students. Hey, Dave from Canada. Kathy. Hey, sweetheart. That's in New Mexico State. Give me big hugs. Uh, William, Dennis, we got former students checking in. Cheers to you guys. Hope you're all well. I really appreciate that. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not that nice. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, so the golfers that were the decent golfers, obviously refinements. And now here's the thing, too. It's not just the Martin Chuck show. When you come to a golf school or a, you know, you, you can go to, uh, you know, Butch Harmon school, the, the grand poobah, the king a coach of king coaches. Okay. Lovely guy. And here's the thing about this. You want to talk about a no BS fella, Butch Harmon, Butch Harmon's going to tell it like it is. And guess what? You're going to go, okay, Butch. And you know it because he's taught the best of the best. And if he says something to you, like, Hey, I need you to do this. You're going to do that. Because you have trust in him. And luckily, most people have trust in me. And more than that, they have trust in my team. Jim Waldron, fantastic coach. Aaron Olson, fantastic coach. Mike Crea, Brian Pate, Courtney Mahon, Brett Gorney. My, my coaches that are with me, that travel with me, that help with my golf school are fantastic humans. And they're fantastic coaches. And I know most golf schools around the country are the same way. So anyway, we've touched on what the newbie has to deal with. Now that really frustrating middle handicap golfer, that's pretty good. And man, they just want it back. It's just want to be able to just shoot in the eighties again. Please, Martin, save me. Okay. Well, I'm going to save you. I'm not going to BS you. 
And I'm, I'm not going to let you get away with the move you always made that frustrates you. What's the definition of sanity? Doing the exact same thing, expecting a different result. We're not going to be insane, okay, people? We're going to do stuff that's going to feel uncomfortable. And guess what? You have three days to feel uncomfortable. And if you suffer, I always say suffer with me. I'm going to suffer with you. You suffer with me. I'm going to give you more than you give me. I'm going to work hard as your coach. As all golf camps will you will have a breakthrough. You will start to feel the differences. You will learn how to take the range motion that maybe you can kind of grasp that juicy fruit up there that you want because it produces great results and how to get that to the golf course a little bit more often. That's what we do. Now, the better player. I, I, I've got some hysterical stories of guys that show up that could beat me, okay? And that's I'm not a bad golfer, okay? But they show up. I had this guy, the Utah state senior champion this guy shows up on everybody's kind of on the range we got broccoli chopping ben down here we got newbie Susie down here and you got this guy in the middle of the of the range deck of the students and it's like dee dee la 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 bum, 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 do, do, do. Bum, bum, bum. it's a stripe show and i'm taking some video of him and i got some trackman numbers on him i'm like why are you here okay like i'm like why are you here and he goes, well, to be honest, I have one little frustrating thing I want you to help me sort out. And I like the way you explain things. I'm like, okay, let's go, right? And that's kind of like how a tour player is. Tour player, pretty darn good, right? They're tour players. When they come or this, when you, when you get a high-level golfer come to your golf camp, and they do, here's what they usually want. They want a nice place to practice for three days. Check, okay? They want caring coaches to bounce ideas back and forth on check they want they usually have one little thing in their swing or one little bugaboo that they want more clarity on check so that's somebody that could easily go get one lesson somewhere but why doesn't a really high level player do that because they know they want more time to put their toe in the water to work on it my coaches and i always joke we'd love to go to a golf school with caring coaches for a few days and just practice. Ooh, that'd be lovely. No phones on, no nada, just good coaches, nice range, good golf balls, meals are yummy, get to play golf. Oh, sign me up, okay? So you get all three variable. You get those three type of people, newbies, the frustrated middle golfers, okay, which is most of you, and then the really good player that shows up. And this guy was just a guy who said, and this has been twice, by the way, all I want to do is work on my mid-range wedges. Okay, perfect. You know, because let's face it, when you're a good player, you smash the driver out there pretty far. You have a lot of wedges between 60 yards and, say, 125. And so this fella, I only saw him once. He only came one time. Guess what we worked on? We worked on a lot of graduated wedges. You know, the little cornerstone shots that hit 40, 60, 80, 100. That's what we worked on. And then we went and played. I'm like, man, the guy stripe showed it down the middle. He didn't bomb it, but he was very accurate, pretty darn long. And really what we helped him with was he spent some time with Mike. Mike's kind of our, our mental guy. He's, you know, that's what he studied in college. Tournament prep, mind readiness, that sort of thing. Mind you, all our coaches kind of talk that because I've suffered in tournament golf, so I'm fairly, um, I'm fairly prepared to deal and share the stuff that faces tournament players. But all the guy really wanted was that. We have other good players that come, and they've got one nagging miss. For whatever reason, the club shallows out too much, or they get stuck a bit, and they hook it, or they block it, or whatever. And that's fine. So a newbie's working on, you know, what end do I hold? What's this thing called? Oh, that's an eight. Okay. And I had a guy, honestly, this is, so, this is hysterical, came up to me, and he said, you know what, Martin? He goes, I am just, I am absolutely smashing that nine iron. And I said, nope, I'm sorry, buddy. That is a six iron so we get we get all kinds at the golf school okay you completely get those so you know you know look down i'm like okay that look right there that's a stronger loft that's a six iron you know if he's watching this i hope he's laughing right now because it's one of the funnier episodes ever and he was a doctor and he's like don't don't tell anybody this i'm like don't worry it's safe with me but i'm not going to say his name but I'm going to hold him at ransom. So I, I'm next episode, I will I will say his name. So, Doc, you got to sign up for another golf school. I'll make it public knowledge that you did. we hold the six and nine thing with you, okay? Just joking. So, obviously, a golf school is something where I hope you get a lot of everything, right? You get a – you get – you learn how to settle into a shot, organize yourself, 
create these, this better opportunity to hit a good shot, learning how to hit a little mid-range strike out there, a pitch shot, a punch shot, developing your skills, the routine of walking into a golf ball. You know what I should have did today? I should have posted, I want to, um, we'll go to a video here in a second, but I want to give a massive shout out to a student of mine, Mike Wales, and I'm using his name. I'll tell you why. So Mike, he won a contest. This, um, you know, there's My Golf Spy. If you guys haven't watched or, or gotten into the website My Golf Spy, it's pretty cool. These, these knucklehead golf lovers are, they test stuff and they say, Hey, this sucks, or this is great. You know, we love this, that we tested the driver, we test this putter, blah, blah, blah. And then they give this, they, they just write about it. And sometimes they're not very nice. And sometimes they wax them on about how good stuff is. Okay. So I said to one of the writer guys, I said, I have the best golf school in the world and I want to prove it. And he's like, are you sure? I said, yep, I am sure. In fact, you have a raffle, you have a draw, you pick out whoever you want from your audience, which is a pretty big audience. And they did this big thing and I'm sure it got them some, some more followers and stuff, which was cool. That's awesome. And I said, I'll fly the guy in on my nickel and he can write about it as much as he wants. Okay. And so this guy comes to the golf school and he was younger than the average golf school attendee. Okay. The guy was probably 30, right? Which is a whippersnapper at my golf school. So the 30 year olds that usually come to the tour circuit golf Academy are usually the son of the older person paying for the golf school. Cause it's not cheap. You know, you want this kind of, you want this wisdom and, and, and these bad jokes, you're going to pay for that. That's funny. And it's expensive. Okay. But the point is this guy comes to the golf school and I'll tell you what he had, he hit it pretty well, but it, he had a grip. Okay. That like, it was on there. He was fast. And man, this, this was the motorcycle, motorcycle grip. And he is pounding nine iron, like 160. Okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is the worst thing. Cause in golf, they always joke, change a grip, lose a friend. So here's this guy who's basically going to have a lot to say about his experience in my golf school. And I'm going to walk right in and I'm going to mess with his grip. And he hit his, and he could smoke his nine iron. He could kind of smoke his driver because he was, he's a stocky dude, big, strong guy. Okay. This dude just posted, this has been a couple years now, but he's been staying in touch with us in our continuity program. Cause you need to have one of those people. That's how you're going to choose a good golf school. Okay. You don't want to have this transactional event where you show up, they take your money, you leave and they're like, see ya. No, 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 no. There's gotta be a relationship. There's gotta be follow-up. You need to suffer these bad jokes for a lot longer than the actual period of the golf school. So remember that. So this fellow shows up, he's got one of these grips. My coaches and I are going, Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He can kind of hit it, but he couldn't do much with this one style of grip, except kind of just mash things. He didn't have enough articulation in the hands and stuff. So we were like, okay, Hey, we got it. We got to get on this. This is going to suck for you. Not going to lie. It's going to suck for us too. Cause you're going to hit a terrible for the first day at least. And he suffered through a grip change. Okay. He suffered through this really, really overly strong grip to a very, very kind of tour style, neutral looking pair of mitts. And it gave him such a better sequence after he suffered the change. He just posted, okay, this is a guy who could shoot in the 90, like crack 90. Now he sent me a nine hole scorecard yesterday where he shot 37. That was cool. So I'm proud of you, Mike. You watch these episodes and so maybe you're even watching this, but it's in my, uh, he posted in his training space, the continuity program, that card. And I know he's all, I'm all helium chested. I'm going to post this scorecard and I'm going to show Martin how good I'm doing. And I'm super proud of you, buddy. So way to go. And I get a kick out of that. I love when students send me a note to say, Hey, I won the sea flight championship. And they didn't even play. They wouldn't dare play in the club championship before. Or I won what I had a kid when the, um, um, the Saskatchewan amateur a couple weeks ago. Amazing, right? That's a big deal. He's going to play in his, his provincial team. He's going to represent his team against the other teams in Canada. That's cool. You know, lots of scholarship kids that have kind of gone on and played college golf because we tease them and we make them want to work hard. That's what's cool. So anyway, I get off on tangents. I apologize. But I was just saying the continuity program, this fellow worked his tail off. I put myself out there as any golf school should to say, you know what, we're the best. If some golf school doesn't say, put their hand up and say, we're the best, uh, what do they think they are? Okay. 
I think we're the best. Now, I'm not taking away from the other golf schools. I'm sure they're awesome. That's fantastic. I know there's a ton of good ones, and I want you to do your research. A lot of people choose a golf school based on their geography. That makes good sense. I get a lot of emails say, hey, Martin, are you coming to Florida? Hey, Martin, are you going to be here? Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? In my summer travels, I do kind of dot around. Obviously, this year in COVID, not so much. You know, we have another Tahoe session the first uh, few days in Tahoe. That's fantastic. I think we have one spot left on the, the second two-day class. So I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to working with you guys when I see you up there. Now, looking back at my notes before producer Steve and Jared lose their mind at me, structure of a golf school. What can you expect? Okay, a lot of golf schools, you show up at my golf school, guess what we do first? We feed you. We sit around a big table. We have a lot of laughs. We tell some stories. Okay, my coaches, we sit at different parts of the table, get to know the students. And, you know, it's, hi, my name is Bill. I'm from, I'm from Minnesota. Hi, I'm Bob. I'm from wherever. You know, people that come to my golf school aren't from down the street. They're from, like, up north, out west, Europe, Australia, wherever they're from. This year might change with COVID. I hope not. I hope people are sick and tired of this being in their house. I really want you to, you know, we'll be safe. We'll wear a mask. You come out. We'll disinfect you. I got a huge bottle of disinfectant. We'll spray it on you. You'll be fine. Come on out and see us. Um, school format. Day one of a school is really about us getting to know you. Okay, getting to know the student. What we'll kind of, uh, we look at you, kind of try to figure you out, the learner. You know, are you freaking out? Are you peaceful? You know, can, what can we challenge you with? So that's something where we're trying to read you. I always say to the students, day one's not for you guys. Sorry, day one's for us. Do we really put our, you know, do we dig in and maybe make a change with things? 100%. But day one is where you're nervous. We're trying to stand back a little bit, look at maybe your data from a launch monitor, look at your 3D info, look at your, you know, what happens with your body weight and how you move. And then, you know, it's not just me, my awesome coaches and I, we kind of get together and go, hmm, let's take John and let's do this with his trail arm. Let's take Susie and let's do this with her grip. Let's teach Bob how to push and rotate off the ground a little bit. And everybody kind of goes, yeah, I like that. Or they, I like being challenged by my coaches. And they'll say, no, you know what? I like that, but let's start here first. Okay. So we have a little powwow of that. Now, on my camps in Phoenix, guess what? Day two, you meet the awesome Mark Williamson, the golf yogi. You know what the golf yogi does? He does what yogis do. He gets you on a mat and he stretches you out and he shows you some basic stuff so that your body can be a little bit more ready for the day. And usually after the first day, you need a little nice golf stretch and Mark's an awesome golfer and a great guy. And he kind of walks you through a basic golf stretch. Well, that hour of you on the mat kind of stretching out and enjoying that people, people always are a little reluctant to that. It's like, why am I doing this? And then to the person after the session, like, Oh my God, that was great. I love that. They feel great. They're ready to go for day two, but that hour lets us as coaches kind of go through the file of everybody and go, okay, yep, check that box. That's what we're going to do with him. That's what we're doing with her. That's what, okay, whew, let's go hut. And then we snap and we get to it. Okay. Are we, are we snap and then we hut, we get to it on the range and then we make sure the groups are organized for what their needs are, because guess what? Everybody's a little different. So if we take the groove, we create little pods, Hey, this is our steeper group. Okay. They're going to learn feels that let the club shallow. This is our too shallow group. They're going to learn feels that help steepen it. This is our newbie group. They're going to learn some basic things about how to manage their golf ball around the golf course. Kind of makes sense when you look at it like, Hey, let's put people in certain grooves so that they can relate to one another. They can see how others suffer. Their questions mean something to everybody in their group because, Oh, I didn't think about that. That was a great question. And then their experienced coach can talk about it. I always preside over the whole golf school, but I, my awesome coaches lead every small group. And then I'm in and out of the groups and kind of fluttering over all that thing. Any questions by the, by the way, from the audience, just want to check with producer Steve. Okay, cool. So the format, you know, you're, you're surrounded by fellow enthusiasts of all skill levels. That's what's cool. And then, you know, there's always the fun of it, but we, we have moments where I'm like, okay, time out, stop, 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 stop. Right. The whole group stops. We bring somebody in because maybe somebody from Boston asked it a great question. Okay. Maybe they ask the question of why is Boston always beat Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs? No, that's not a funny question, but they might ask a question that I think the whole group Okay, we'll enjoy. So we'll have a moment. We'll say, hey, you know, Bob from Boston asked the question. The group comes in. And usually it's, some mo it's a learning moment that people enjoy. And then it'll 
create other questions, and that's a lot of fun. Then we have breakout sessions, right? Every golf school should have a breakout session. Ball flight laws. That's a good one. You know, what actually makes the ball curve? What makes it stop on the green? What speed, what, what carry can you expect for your speed if you hit a good shot, right? I mean, the truth of it is most people have no idea how far they hit it. They have no idea. You know, I've got an eight iron. Sorry, I don't have foresight set up to where you can see it. But, you know, I've got my monitor right here. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to fib to you. If I hit this solidly, it's going to fly 162. Okay, so I'm gonna set up here, I'm gonna hit this eight iron, and I'm not really warmed up, so I'm taking a bit of a risk on my carry, but let's see how I do. And that was not 162, that's gonna fly 157. And I'm looking, oh, you know I lied, 147. <gasps> so that's in the soup short of the green. But the reality is, I actually know how far my ball's gonna carry, and not in that poor example, most people don't. Most people have some Mythical idea that they hit their 7-iron 150 or 160 or 170. Sorry, people, okay? I had a hysterical situation happen to me a couple years ago or five years ago now in the UK where the guy who was in charge of the golf schools got some new clubs. He wanted to get his yardages. And he's telling me how he got these fancy new clubs, and I set up the launch monitor, and he went through his whole bag. I turned off all the data. And at the end, after he, I said, are you done? He goes, yep. I said, perfect. Let's look at how far you carry everything. Okay, here you go. You carry your 7-iron 128. He went, no, I don't. I carry it. one. I hit 7-iron from 150. I say, you might hit 7-iron from 150, but then you pitch it from 20 yards short of the green. He goes, and I said, no, no. I hit 7-iron this and watch, and I'll demonstrate. It'll fly if I hit a decent one, unlike the last one. So sometimes just the reality of, hey, it's okay. You know what? Guess what? This guy right here isn't dunking a basketball anytime soon. I don't think I can dunk a basketball. Well, maybe on the little, the little, little basketball thing I got for my son when he was when he was four years old. But my point is, if you live in reality and you know what your speed is and you know what the legitimate carry of your shots are, now you're a better golfer. If you live in this space where it's like, oh, well, you know, seven iron, I'm told, is a 150 club. Well, 7-iron for some people might be a 190 club, but it might be a 100 club. You know who it's a 100 club for? Jackson Chuck, my little guy. So when he stands there on the, on the golf course and he's got 100 yards, you know what he pulls? 7-iron. You know why? Because it's the right club. Because he knows it's the right club. It's not a mystery. If he hits a good one, it goes 100 yards. If it doesn't hit it, it goes 85. If he smokes it and pulls it a bit, maybe it goes 105. But it's not a mystery. And as a, somebody coming to a golf school, you need to know how far you carry a flushed shot. Not a downwind shot, not a shot hit out of the fluffy grass that's, you know, that cur that intermediate rough where you get a fly or lie. Not that one ball that went 170 downwind on a firm fairway and rolled on over the green. That's not your average. Let's be honest, as a teacher and as a student, know what your average is. So, my going around thinking about this. You know, I, I certainly know there's there's great schools there um, that come to mind. Jim McLean does an amazing job. Okay, Jim's in Miami. He does a fantastic job. His coaches are highly trained. Butch Harmon in Vegas, excellent. Pia and Lynn, north of me in Scottsdale, excellent. Um, Dana Rader Golf School, excellent. Butch's son Claude Harmon has a golf school in Florida, Floridian, I think. Excellent. And I know I'm missing tons of them, so I apologize to you coaches out there that know me and I know you, and I forget to list you as an awesome school. There's a ton of ton of awesome golf schools out there, okay, that are going to help you immensely. Now, things you should look for. Let's roll that continuity video. Actually, you know what? Show, show that one video of the balls in the air for me, okay, because I want to just touch on this, and we'll get into this a little bit farther. Right, so this is gonna roll, I think. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we'll play this one, perfect. So this, what is this? This is a silly video of me posting stuff. Sometimes, like I'm in my jammies in some of these videos. I put in videos, I do all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna play one. I might put in a video that, you know, this is a video I shot in, in uh, I was in, where was I? Eastern Long Island, okay, at my friend Michael Jacobs' place. And Michael's an amazing coach, by the way. And, you know, this is just content that rolls in. 
above and beyond your continuity program. This is up at Edgewood Tahoe at the back of the range where I'll be in a couple of weeks. And this, I'm going through this really quickly. Blah, 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 blah. But you get my point. I'm talking to a group of people and they're going to have something. When they go home, they're going to have recollection of what's going on, what they did. And then as this scrolls through, I drop in all kinds of random stuff, even after the school's gone. This is just somebody's training space now. One of our favorite students, John Albritton, he's been to a few schools. He's, he's a he's a big fan and friend of the, of the golf school. But that he's got his personal videos in there for him to reflect back on, to ask questions. And the bottom of these, and I'm scrolling through this pretty quickly, but there's a little bit of a there's a little call out button there and another little fist bump button right there. When you go to a golf school, you can ask a question in your training space. You can post a video in your training space. Guess who watches it? Me. I'll comment. You know, it may take me a day or two if I'm busy, but I always get back to my students. I say, hey, listen, this again, if, if I want you to be awesome, to be awesome. When you're done with me at a school, you're not done with me. You have this way to stay in touch. And if a golf school out there isn't doing that, I would say don't go to it. Let's pop to the, this video, this little picture. I love this, okay? Because this is golf, people, right? You've got physical skills, intent, awkward lies, short game, half partial shots, full swing, right? Guess what? There's a guy juggling those, right? In golf, golf is one massive juggle of skills and decisions. In a golf school, you've got to kind of have a, a team that you choose that's going to help you with all this stuff. Because that's what it's about. Now, we may really grind on full swing stuff with you for a little bit. You know, we might be kind of just really hammering that one. Maybe technique. Maybe, you know, you're somebody that really needs help with awkward lies. Or maybe your intent. You know, you, you, you just need to understand the motion of the swing better. A lot of people don't have the right intent. You know, they try to swing the club straight back, straight through. You know, they, you know, they try to hit down on it to make it go up. All those things that are kind of like, okay, yeah, a club travels down to make the ball go up. But guess what? Every club goes down because gravity is making it go down. Every club I've ever seen has to go down. You don't have to try to hit down. It's going to go down. You got to get your down in the right place. That'll make, when that loft hits the ball, it'll make the ball go up. Okay? So there's lots of understanding that, that has to happen. Let's go to that next little thing. And this, this is what's the best, you know? That's my academy building back there. There's a group of people. And I love this. Make new friends, have fun, stay in touch. That's the best thing about it, right? Like I feel like I have 27 or 800 people in my in my training spaces that I kind of manage over. My coaches help me, obviously. And every day we can just go uh, face on. Every day, you know, we have somebody posts an update. Like I was saying, Mike Wales, for example, posted his scorecard, his best ever yesterday. Not surprised. The guy puts in the work. Right. And to me, that's what's really pleasing for me to see somebody that came out of the golf school. And this was a freaky one because he won something where he was maybe it didn't go so well for him. He was going to go back and share his experience. Well, luckily, it went well for him. And not luckily. I mean, I knew I was going to give him my, my all. But you never know the people you're dealing with. Right. Every once in a while, you get somebody that's a little bit different that has an expectation that's not exactly maybe in line. And so that's kind of what I you know. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, I talked about the magic wand. Well, the magic wand is, you know, me making you 15. So you'll listen to your coach and work hard. The magic wand isn't for me to come and whisper in your ear the magic secret so that you walk. Oh, and now I get it. I wish that were the case. I actually used to think when I was a little kid that my mentor, George Newton, was going to walk up to me one day and say, OK, you know what? You put the work in. Here's the secret. I swear I did. I was that cuckoo when I was little. OK. And then I realized it's not about the miss. It's, it's not, there's no magic secret. There's just elevated understanding and application. And that's what you get at a golf school is elevated understanding and application. And then your body and your conscious and subconscious don't fight one another so much. And you can become a pretty darn good golfer. Okay. So how do you prepare to attend one of these things. Naturally, you're going to do some research. You're going to get online. You're going to look at reviews. You're going to, okay, where is it? Geographically, it doesn't make sense to you. You know, obviously my home base is Phoenix. I'm in Phoenix for a reason because it's easy to get to me. The airport's huge and it's 10 minutes from my golf course, right? And you can stay at the hotel by the airport and shuttle back and forth. So I purposely did that. I'm not in the middle of nowhere somewhere where it's hard. There's, there's not much headwind to come see me. 
most golf most golf schools have chosen locations that are fairly easy to get to okay so you choose what makes sense for you right i specifically made a choice i'm gonna live in phoenix poor martin chuck no it's great we love it family loves it here yeah it's a little hot in the summertime if you want to sweat with me you can do come do a one-on-one -on -one in the summertime in the summer we travel a little bit we get around we'll be in lake tahoe in a couple of weeks that's tough duty for me i'm joking it's amazing okay but we choose locations that are either destination where people want to go to, oh, and by the way, they want to do some golf school, or they really want golf school and they're going to go to that spot. In my case, it's Phoenix. So you do your research, you pick your location that makes sense for you. You pick the coaches that have some pedigree that you think will help you. Check on the referrals. You know, luckily I've had, I'm going in my 11th year of full-time golf schools. So we've had, you know, thousand people, a couple thousand people through now. And Gratefully, we've got a ton of great reviews. I think I've had, you know, a couple of reviews. One lady gave me a one star, and, the, and it was the review was the hike wasn't what I anticipated. The terrain was a little bit too rocky for my liking. So obviously, that one star review was posted in the wrong space. Most of my reviews, I'm grateful to say, are five star reviews. They're like, man, that Martin teased me. He was tough on me, but we had a blast. That's a great review. I appreciate that, right? And so if you know the coaches care, wherever it is, whether it's whatever part of the country, whatever golf school you choose, hopefully you have coach, caring coaches that will challenge you and give you a plan because that's what you need when you leave as a plan. So your choices, you got to do the research, pretty easy to do. Be careful out there now when you put in best golf schools in the old Google search bar, guess what? There's some pretty crafty marketers out there. I'm not one of them. Now my team, pretty crafty, but they're not really spending a ton of money on marketing my golf school. You know why? Because you guys did that for me, so I'm grateful for that. But be careful, make sure you read your reviews. If you ask friends, ask club pros, ask your pros, hey, what do you? have you heard of that Chucky Martin guy? And the pro might say, Chucky Martin, oh, you mean Martin Chuck? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I've heard that guy's a good guy. I've seen them at PGA seminars or whatever. Yeah, or what about this guy or that guy? Do your research, you'll get some good insights, okay? But I would look for, obviously cheapest isn't always best. I'm not the most expensive, I'm not the cheapest. What do you get for your money? And that's what I would look for. What kind of follow-up do you get? I'm missing my great friend of mine, Andrew Rice, got a great golf school in South Carolina great golf or he's in savannah georgia actually i'd highly recommend that if you're in that area great coach awesome location and the price is right for what you get from him is amazing okay um think about you know what are you going to be left with when you go to the golf school you're going to be left with the basic things like like homework i'm going to give you homework now for the golfer that is the mid-range guy, okay? The frustrated 15 handicapper who's starting to slip. He's on the banana peel. He's on his way to the 20 handicap zone, all right? Here's typically what we're gonna do with him. That guy, okay, give me a face on down the line. I'm gonna give you the 15 handicap on the banana peel and wanting to get off the banana peel so he can climb back into his 10 handicap where he feels like he has a legit shot to break 80 if he sinks a few putts, okay? So this is what we see. You know I'm a gizmo guy if you've watched any of my stuff. I am not afraid to strap something on you. You know that, okay? I'm not afraid to put a training aid on you or make you stand on something or make you do whatever to help you get an external feel to improve faster. So the typical guy who is a little bit older than me and he's tired of slicing it, he's gonna do this. He's gonna get so deep and so low in his backswing that he has no chance and he's gonna come over the top. That's the basic guy who comes see me. The number one, uh, Jim McClain calls it death move. Well, guess what? That move is usually a club that's whipped inside at P2. It looks something like this. And once you start your swing off like this, usually the result is something that gets steep and then you've got to fit it in. You've lost your power, your sequence is shot. A good coach is gonna help you through that. What we're gonna do with that person is we're gonna make sure at P2, that camera view down the line, that that club head is outside the hands, that you can get your arms up, that you can displace this grip. If I take this swing inside way deep over here, that grip is basically a little taller than Hervé Velasquez right there, okay? I want this handle to get really high so you have some time to let this thing shallow and collect the golf ball. So a guy that's struggling maybe with distance, maybe his shots 
Maybe he's got to take the head cover off for his second shot all the time. We're going to add speed. We're going to try to get handle displacement, get this club up here, so this Ferrari has a chance to get up to speed. Because the guy has enough sense about the game. He knows how to kind of cuddle it up from greenside. He's not a bad putter, but if he's always hitting like some kind of six iron or hybrid into the green every time on a par four, that makes scoring really difficult. So we're going to look at every element we can to take that guy, organize his swing path, but get him his speed back. Now, typically, you know what we see? We see a lot of this. That same guy who whips it inside also overflexes his trail knee, basically shuts his hips off. So we're going to say, okay, guy, let's do this. Let's displace this handle. Let's rotate these hips a lot. Let's get this club up and high so you can have the potential for more speed. Doesn't mean swing hard, just means the potential's there to gradually increase your speed so when you touch the golf ball, you have a bit more on it. If it goes 10, 15 yards farther, you're gonna be better because guess what? You're pulling eight irons and seven irons rather than six irons and hybrids. So those are those are something that is really meaningful for that dude who's on the banana peel, all right? Who's going the wrong way. Let's make sure that his impact relationships are decent. Let's make sure that he's not really kind of crushing his speed accumulators. And then, you know, once he starts to free up a little bit and get a little bit more room, you know, and I'm not talking about, you know, some cheesy overswing. I'm talking about structured elements that can uh, build some speed. Now that's kind of fun because who doesn't like melting one up the middle of the face and having to go, you know, a few yards, those magic yards past your buddy's ball. That is really cool. So, for those kind of folks, you know, and that might start off with some of these kind of drills, just building structure again, learning how to do the old cornerstone drill, rotating and relocating, making sure your low points in the right place. But once the coach has kind of checked that box, then it's all about, okay, cool. Let's get that person's speed up. Let's make sure the driver isn't descending into the ball because that spins it too much, takes out some of the forward momentum. Let's make sure the driver is levelish or even up into the ball so the ball stays in the air, launches a little bit higher, doesn't have so much spin that it goes zzz, that it stays and kind of almost tumbles and stays flat in the air. Those are the ones you're like, wow, that's going to stay up there a while. That's what we want. And that's tr what we try to do for the folks that are on that, you know, on the banana peel going into the 20 handicap zone. Now, you newbies, we love you newbies. We love you newbies because you're easy to coach. It's easy. Okay, you need stuff. Super easy for us to say, okay, here's routine. Here's a great grip. Fantastic. Don't let this face get wide open in the downswing. Let's manage our risk conditions. Maybe we put a smart ball between your arms that this ball right here that the best players in the world use regularly to warm up. You know, let's teach you how to move yourself properly. You know, let's, if we learn how to do that, once you learn how to do that, we can speed you up too, but we got to show you the routine of things, okay? So it's not about necessarily speed when you're a newbie. It's about just kind of understanding what end to hold, how to get your hands on the club nicely, and the basic motions needed to play good golf, and then answering your questions, because golf, guess what? It asks you a ton of questions during a round of golf, and you've got to have the answers for those. So that's a huge, huge deal. And then I won't touch on the really good players that come to the golf school because they're really kind of one-dimensional. They want to practice with caring coaches and they want to buff out one thing. And it could be who knows what, a, fu a funky miss with a driver or just wedges or something like that. So you guys, I think, any questions from the, uh, from the peeps out there right now? Nothing at all? Uh, Kathy says that after school she plays worse for a few rounds until the changes stay full. And cool. Then forward. So I'm going to repeat that. Kathy... Chafee from from Texas, Kathy has been to a few golf schools, and and this is a great honest answer. You know, she says, Martin, I got to be honest. After a golf school, she's a little bit muddled up, and she goes, she doesn't play her best for a few few rounds, and then she starts to self organize, and it feels better, and she gets better after that. Perfect. In a lot of cases, that's that's typical. Sometimes we have people, and I'll say this to people, I'll say. You know what? We are trying to chip away at a pattern. And I, and I start my golf school, you know, with this silly little analogy, okay? For me, and I'm staring into a light here, so I'll look a little to my off to the right. Juggling right now. Bum 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 bum. So I'm so nervous right now. You know, I know people are watching me live on YouTube. 
whoop de doo right? So I can juggle. So I'll say to people, I'll take one person up and I'll say, hey, let me show you how to juggle. So the person's like, Hoo -hoo -hoo. they'll get up and they'll stand beside me and I'll say, okay, put two balls in your right hand. Put one ball in your left hand. Take the ball in your right hand, toss it up in the air and catch it in your left. Guess what? 19 out of 20 of you can do that. Then I'll say, hey, congratulations. Now with that one ball up in the air, toss the one underneath it and catch it in your right hand. One out of 20 of you can do that. But here's what happens. It goes, boom. <laughs> then we laugh, right? Here's the point. If you had that attitude of fun and laughter messing up, keep that attitude when you're practicing. Keep the fun of it. Leave the ego, okay? No egos, please. You want to see somebody who's suffered in golf? Me. Okay, I can hit some terrible shots and I can hit some wonderful shots. In either one, guess what? If I hit a terrible shot, okay. You know what the best thing about a tournament golfer or any golfer that's really good is? Short-term memory. Short-term memory is a key. Short-term memory when you practice is the key. Get over yourself. Get over your ego. I always joke, you're not that good. Neither am I. Get past yourself. Do better next time. Get your intent organized for your next shot. That's the way to progress. When you choose a golf school, choose one where you have supporting coaches that won't let you kind of get away with stuff. I won't. Okay, I tell you what, sometimes in a, a golf school, I will be all over somebody's hands for three days of getting their hands on nice and organized. Okay, yeah, I'll have a lot of disinfectant around to do that. But my point is, I'm not going to let you cheat. And anybody, any coach at a great golf school won't let you do that either because you're only cheating yourself. Okay, so... Let's see, we're going to do a little wrap up here. So thanks for the question, Kathy. Always great to see you and your family. Um, your hubby did amazing in Tahoe in June. Amazing. Your sons are awesome and you did amazing. And the funny thing was your hubby, okay, didn't do amazing at the previous golf school. But I think, I don't know, maybe it was retirement. Who knows? Maybe it was the right amount of margaritas. I don't know. But he did fantastic, and I'm glad he's enjoying his golf at a higher level now. That's awesome. So, And your boys are talented. They'll do great. So the f best thing for me, you know, doing golf schools is making friends, keeping in this, this relational environment where they have a platform and they have a way to stay in touch with me and my coaches. That is what's awesome. I'm very blessed to do what I do. I have a hysterically fun time doing it. I never feel like I never feel like I'm working doing this. And I know you're like, Martin, shut up. It's an hour. You need to get off this this camera. I could do this all day in a golf school environment. It's the same thing. Now I do shut up in a golf school environment because I stand back and I watch and I wait and I'll look and I'll interject when appropriate. And when you find the golf school that you want to go to, whether it's ones that I mentioned a good coach will do that. They'll let you struggle just a bit. They'll let you self-organize just a bit. Then they'll jump in and they'll step away and they'll let you figure it out a little bit because that is cool. So why one-on-one? -on -one? Why golf school? In golf school, it's immersive. There's time. You have time to make a change. You have time to go back and forth with coaches. You have time to ask questions. In my school in Phoenix, you have a couple of sleeps. You get a couple of nights to think about it and ask questions. And then when you leave, guess what? You get to ask more questions. You get to send videos. We get to watch videos. We get to comment. And then I'll come in here sometimes and I'll, I'll oftentimes and say, okay, great question. Here's what you need to do. And I'll send you a response video back. And guess what? We don't charge you for that. That's part of your tuition. We don't nickel and dime you. You come to a golf school, you get a lot for that school. I like to think you get a lot more than many schools. So I choose, choose wisely. You will have a blast. I am going to say, okay, there's always a thing. What's your homework? Your homework, go ahead and Google golf schools. Okay. You may not find me at the top of them, but just go ahead and check it out. Maybe you don't come this year to my school or somebody else's school, but maybe it's next year. Maybe it's two years from now. And you want to have a hysterical time at a golf school, bring a couple buddies, ladies, make it a ladies trip. Okay. Couples naturally, Okay, but it's so much fun when you bring a friend, whether it's a girl's trip, a guy's trip, father-son trip, mother-daughter trip, warms my heart. It's hysterical. The Gormans, I'm going to leave it with this. John Gorman, great guy from back east. He's been many, many times to my golf school. He brings his sons. It is hysterical. They just came to the Midwest. They're with me at Grand Geneva Resort. We had an epic time. I love to see the father-son's just having a blast at golf camp. For me, it's just the best thing to watch. 
And so for you guys out there, no homework this week, just Google golf schools, okay? I'm gonna close right now, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna thank my sponsors, Nike Golf, naturally for keeping me looking fly. Hanma Golf, my new sticks, and I'm not joking here, people, okay? Big OEMs, fantastic, but please, 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 you want an amazing, amazing set of irons. I'm not baloneying you here. The TR20s are fantastic. Please go check out Hanma and get and get yourself a fitting on these. If you're shopping for some new clubs, don't just go big OEM, okay? Check these bad boys out. Price about the same, and they are magnificent. I wouldn't say that unless I, I might just say, oh, my sponsor's Hanma. No, no, no. I'm gushing over these because they deserve to be gushed over. TR20s, amazing, okay? Even roll, obviously, Foresight. Thank you all, and you guys have a great week. I will see you next week.